In addition to being able to put fragments on the back stack, using the Fragment Manager, you can also navigate through the back stack. Now, the simplest one is pop back stack with no arguments. Basically, that does whatever hitting the back button would do. It just moves back to the next back stack entry there on the back stack, right? So again, it's the same as just hitting the back button. The other thing you can do is that in addition to moving back just to the previous one, you can jump back to a specific one by calling pop back stack and passing in the name that you use on add to back stack. Remember that as we were calling add to back stack, we kept passing names in there. Those names name the back stack entry. So call and pop backstack with a name will roll you back to that entry. Now there's two ways to look at it. So we take our, our backstack here and let's say that we call it add the backstack five times. Each time we called it with screen one, screen two, screen three, through screen five. If we then go to the fragment manager call pop backstack to screen three, and we're passing zero as the second argument, what that'll do is it'll walk back in the backstack until it finds the entry that was called screen three. And that entry is the one that will become the current screen. You can also call pop back stack inclusively. In other words, if we start to take the same back stack with five entries on it, each screen one, screen one, screen two, through screen five, when we call pop back stack, for that second argument, we pass in pop back stack inclusive. That says walk back to the back stack and get rid of each one, including the named one. So we go back through there, the one that becomes active is the one that was prior to the name backstack entry. Now there are a number of ways to interact with the backstack. One of the things that's really useful is to be notified anytime there are backstack changes. So if you make a class and implement on backstack, excuse me, on backstack changed listener, and pass a reference to that to backstack, excuse me, add backstack change listener to the fragment manager, that instance will be called every time the backstack changes. That means anytime something is added to it or anytime something is removed from it, right? Whether it's a user action or programmatic action. You can also access the contents of the backstack as well. You can call get backstack entry count. That'll tell you how many things are in there, how many entries are in the backstack. And you can get to a particular backstack entry by calling get backstack entry at and you pass in the index the index values on it are zero through get backstack entry count minus one if you call get backstack entry at pass again get backstack entry count minus one that tells you what the entry is that's next in the queue in other words if you, if you back up if the user hits the back button or you pop the backstack that's the one that's going to come up next all right so let's do a little bit more with the backstack in our code here. So one of the things we have in our application is a previous button. Let's say we want that to work just like the back button. So what we'll do here is when we get the fragment manager, we'll just say fragment manager pop back stack. And that allows us to move back one by one. Right? So that's one easy thing we can do. Now another thing that's interesting to do is let's go ahead and implement the interface that lets us see back stack changes. So we're just going to go ahead and do that directly on my activity. So just say implements fragment manager dot and we'll call it it's the uh, on backstack change listener you can go ahead and implement the method for that okay. all right what we'll do inside of here is uh, I guess a couple things to do now one thing I've got is a little helper function I've written here called show message which just uh, shows a toast and writes the log file so inside of there we'll just do a show message backstack changed say backstack changed so we can see that something happened. Another thing we can do is that let's go ahead and walk through the back stack. And we'll write that stuff out to our, our log cat. Now I've got another helper function here, log backstack entry. If you hand it in a backstack entry, it will just go ahead and write the name that's on for that entry into the log. So we'll use that. Right, so we'll go here is we'll just walk through them. In fact, let me just add a quick little log message here, say something like uh, log D backstack contents starting with index zero. So I've got to put my uh, tag on there. So we get that there. And that's good. It's just create a little um, a loop to walk through it. So first we'll get the uh, entry count. So say backstack entry count equals. 
And we need the uh, fragment manager to do that. So let me go ahead and get a reference to him first. Right, once we've got that, we can say fm get back stack entry count. Right, that'll tell us how many there are. And just write a little for loop. So we've got that loop there. And now we can simply say, my log back stack entry, we'll just say fm dot get back stack entry at, pass in that index. And that should walk through them now. So basically, we've got our class implemented with the interface. That interface will say that every time we change, we want to be called. It'll call this method. And each time the back stack changes, we'll write out what's in the back stack. Now, the last thing that we need to do is actually inform the back stack manager, excuse me, the fragment manager, that we have a listener, right? Just because we implement the interface, that's not good enough. All right, so up here in my on create, I'm going to get to fragment manager again. I've got that there. I'm just going to say fragment manager, add backstack change listener, and pass this. And that should be good enough now for my activity to be informed every time the backstack changes. All right, so I'm here in my application. So first I'll click add, and that's the fragment. If I go back here to my logs, notice if I see one button click add occurred, you see all the events for the fragment, but notice if backstack changed. And there's one backside directory called add. Back here. Now if I say remove then add to, notice here that we'll see that down here. Okay. Our on button remove is clicked. We see the fragment events go on. And we'll see our backstack change. So we've got add then remove. If I go on with that, replace with one, detach attach. We see each time here that our backstack is changing. So as we're adding to it, the backstack is changing. So if I go back here now, scroll down towards the bottom. Notice that now we click button attach. We've got all the events. And notice our backstack is getting pretty full up. Add, remove, replace, detach, and attach. Right? So all the contents that we're pushing on, or all those backstack entries we're pushing on, are in there and we can see them. Right? So now, if I click, say, the back button, right, that changes the backstack entry. I look down here. Attach is going on now at the detach level. Right? Now my move prev should work just like the back button. So it takes me back here to fragment one. Like fragment two, if I go back to my event log here. Notice my back stack is just getting smaller and smaller. Let's move previous. Get back there. Right? And then finally, we're all done and we're off the back stack. And so we saw there that we were able to monitor it and see its contents very easily.